So this video is about phase locked loop and we have already seen this phase locked loop while uh, carrier synchronization for double sideband sub full carrier modulated systems. So phase locked loop is a very important device for various demodulation schemes both in amplitude modulation as well as in angle modulated signals and the primary reason for this is it's a very uh, cost effective device. It's a very cheap device if we think in terms of cost so it is very easily available and it's very effective to do demodulation with this right. So in this video we will first uh, understand how phase lock loop works and then we will see how we can uh, get our demodulated output for angle modulated wave right. So before beginning the actual lecture let us understand some fundamentals from linear control systems uh, especially this closed loop system that we have. So we have a closed loop system here and uh, there are various terms which are written here you might be probably aware of all these terms uh, from your control system course but uh, just to understand this phase log loop more effectively let us again give some time to it. So you have uh, this input signal or the reference signal RS and uh, this is fed into this GS or the forward path transfer function and you are getting some output out of it right. So now uh, what we want through this complete system is if this output changes, if this output changes uh, we just want to feed back a component of that output uh, to the original input we will either add or subtract it from the original input so that this error signal will be chained and accordingly your output from the complete system will be changed. So if, you, if your output changes from the reference input by some amount then we feed a portion of output depending upon the transfer function this HS and uh, then we feed it back into the system and we get the output. So this control action is implied in that way right. So <coughs> reference input is clear to us, error signal is also known to us because it is the sum or difference of the feedback signal and the reference signal. So if we take a plus that is if we add the feedback signal into our original reference signal your system might go into oscillatory behavior and it becomes unstable. So for stability or for stable systems we do have this negative feedback and your control action will be better there and uh, then again we know what output signal is and this is forward path transfer function. GS is your forward path transfer function. And similarly, if you look at open loop transfer function, that is GS into HS. So this GS into HS is the open loop transfer function. And if you look this system overall, this overall system will be uh, uh, represented by this MS, which is closed loop transfer function, which is CS by RS. And from the calculations in control system, <coughs> we already know that this ms equal to gs over 1 minus plus gshs and this minus plus is selected based upon uh, this bs signal whether it is added or subtracted. So if it is added you will have minus here and if it is subtracted you have plus here. So for our cases we will be making a negative feedback so we will use this plus sign. So <coughs> there are other terms associated with this also. You can read them for yourself error ratio is there and primary feedback ratio is there. So we need to keep this in mind because what we will try to do is phase locked loop in general is a non-linear device. So we first try to convert it into LTI system and when it is converted into LTI system this linear control systems principle can be applied there and we can easily come to a conclusion because we have already done a good analysis for this in our control systems course. So moving on now we come to phase logged loop. So this is the structure of phase logged loop. Here also you can see that there are two transfer functions. One is for the forward path and this one is for the feedback path. But there are some points of differences from this first figure that you see here. 
the first difference is this control system that is that we have studied up till now is linear in nature however this device in general is non linear in nature and how is it non linear you can see uh, various components which are there in this they are non linear in nature we will talk about them one by one so the first difference is this phase locked loop device in general is non linear in nature the second point of difference that you see here is here is a multiplier this is a multiplier and in your original uh, diagram that we had there was this summer you could sum things you could either subtract or add things so we had a summer so here we have got a multiplier this is the second point of difference and now let us talk about the individual components right so first one is loop filter and second one is voltage controlled oscillator so let's first talk about voltage controlled oscillator voltage controlled oscillator is simply any device whose output frequency is controlled by the input voltage input uh, amplitude of the voltage right so you provide an input from this side and you get a output from this side now in output the frequency of the output will be changed as per the amplitude of the input signal so that's what we mean by voltage controlled oscillator right and um, the voltage controls oscillators instantaneous frequency is w vco and that is omega c plus c into e not t this e not t is there and uh, c is a constant of this vco so it's uh, input uh, or instantaneous frequency is omega c plus something and that something is the signal that you get from here right so according to this particular signal its frequency is varied this omega c is a constant term so your complete instantaneous frequency is either increased or decreased depending upon what you get here right so now uh this is the thing about vco and one more important point do not be confused between this e not t or error signal here we will call it error signal but if you remember in the original diagram this error signal was here right before this application of this uh, signal so don't be confused in the terminology the terminology is a little bit different here we are calling this as output because we were interested in this for this closed loop system but when we talk about tll we will call we will call this as output the output that we have received after this point we will call this as the desired output however if you compare the two things you can see that uh, you, we have symbols already assigned and if we talk in terms of symbol everything will be crystal clear right so this is the first device which is called as voltage controlled oscillator right the next thing is loop filter now what is the purpose of this loop filter it is usually a low pass baseband filter now what is the purpose of this the purpose will be clear to us within a moment let us come discuss this complete system so what we are trying to achieve through this system we are trying to send a input to this signal so input will be available at this particular point and then after providing input uh, we want that the output that we have uh, from the voltage controlled oscillator that is this output should have the exact same frequency as the input and the exact same phase as this theta i and theta not t so these two should be same omega c should be same and theta i and theta o should become same and uh, there is however a relaxation for theta i and theta o if this theta i and theta o are not same even if they have some constant difference that is also acceptable right so if such is the condition where the frequency of the input and output becomes same and the phases these phases they have some difference constant difference then we say that the loop is locked right so that's what we want to achieve here now how do we achieve this we achieve this through this feedback mechanism suppose that initially i was sending this signal and with time uh, this theta it changed so if theta it has changed then through feedback we are feeding a portion of this particular signal which is error signal here through this voltage controlled oscillator and this will be multiplied here and uh, then again this signal will be changed and you will get the correct output so how you will get it we will go into the math of that um, math of that a little later but 
Another point to understand here is that this omega ct plus theta it, this complete thing, this complete angle in general is not a linear signal. So earlier we were using this notation a sine omega ct plus some constant quantity. Now this theta it in general is a time dependent parameter. So uh, this theta it is time dependent, this theta ot is also time dependent. So this is not a linear term uh, in time, right? So it can have any kind of dependence. And uh, now let's talk about how the feedback mechanism works. So what happens is through this multiplier, these two signals will get multiplied. And after multiplication, you will get this quantity AB by 2 into sine of uh, this quantity plus this quantity. So let's not bother about these amplitudes much because these amplitudes can be adjusted by various um, uh, devices in your system like amplifier, etc. So this quantity will be there. Now you see that this quantity sine theta i minus theta naught is a baseband quantity. If the difference between theta i and theta naught is not too much, then this is a baseband quantity. And this twice of omega c, so omega c is usually high because carrier frequency is kept usually very high so this is a very high frequency term so what we do is we try to just remove this term because this is not useful for us and we take this term only so this loop filter in general is a low pass baseband filter and we get this particular signal so this is the signal that we have received here and this theta i minus theta naught I have uh, not written t here but it is understood that theta i and theta naught are time dependent so this error function that is uh, theta e is equal to theta i minus theta naught t and this is fed as an input to your voltage controlled oscillator I mean this complete signal is fed as an input to this voltage controlled oscillator and this voltage controlled oscillator will generate output such that the frequency of the output will be varied that is this theta naught will be varied such that these two signals become exactly equal if they become exactly equal this error will again become equal to zero and this omega c will only be there and this term will be zero right but however if the frequency of the inputs or the incoming signal changes through the feedback mechanism this will try to make these two things equal so now this is the uh, complete mechanism of how a feedback system works in general but through this discussion we have learned why loop filter is usually a low pass and baseband filter and uh, voltage uh, what is uh, this vco or voltage controlled oscillator right now uh, we want to bring this complete system into this particular format so that we are able to apply the formulas that we have already derived so now we look at this complete system in term of these in terms of these angles or phases only instead of taking the entire signal i am now going to look at the system from the perspective of phases so if i say input signal i mean i have inputted some phase here right and that phase how it uh, travels into the system what is its journey let us try to draw that and that complete thing is drawn here so now let's look at this complete thing the phase of this input signal is theta it. So theta it is there. And theta ot is the phase of the phase that you have received from the output of VCO. So this is there. They are, you know, you, you have taken difference of these things. So it is there. That you get theta et here. And uh, Mm, this theta, sorry, this is not theta et, don't call it theta et, this is by mistake, I have written it here. Uh, no, 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 this is theta et only. So this theta et is the difference of theta et and theta ot. Now, uh, this passes through a sign. Why I have written sign here? Because you see, after this multiplication, what happens is uh, you get this kind of thing, sine of theta i minus theta naught. You have neglected these terms already. So a representation of this could be like this theta et where it is received, this is sine of theta et. So sine of theta et is received here. And then this is the loop filter. So loop filter has transfer function hs. But if you talk in terms of phase, it will be ak into hs. So how have we arrived at this AK into HS? Uh, let's take that uh, time domain representation of this HS as HT, right? So in time, its uh, impulse response is HT. So if you pass your signal through this particular loop filter, your signal AB by 2 into sine theta I minus theta will be convolved with HT. And on convolving with HT, you will receive output as E naught T here, right? So now this output, 
uh, if you solve that equation completely and adjust the amplitude terms, you will receive an AK factor here. You, you might use uh, this particular equation also. That is the output that you have received here is E naught T. So theta naught T bar will be equal to C E naught T. Now this theta naught T is derivative of your theta O T. Right? So we will come to it why this is theta naught t. But if this is the output which is e naught t and this is half of a b into uh, half of a b into sine of theta i minus theta naught. So this signal is the, what you have received here. It is passed through this particular filter which has got a k and k is half of c into b. You already know what c is. You already know what b is. b comes from this thing and a is already known to you. It comes from this thing and the c, small c is uh, this particular thing c e naught t. Now now, where does it come from? So you have received an error signal here and when you pass this complete signal into VCO, what happens is VCO, uh, this theta naught t or the instantaneous frequency of VCO will be controlled by this E naught t and it is guided by this equation C E naught t. So C comes from this particular place and uh, instantaneous frequency when it is integrated you will get this complete angle. So integration of this whatever you receive here C E naught t is this particular thing. So whatever you receive here is integrated you will get theta output t. So that is why that is how you have received this theta output t because if you differentiate this this should be equal to omega VCO because ultimately it is coming from voltage controlled oscillator. So this is theta output T which you have received. Now you'll have a look at this particular diagram. So this is the same diagram but earlier you were looking in this diagram from the perspective of the complete signals that you have passed but in this diagram you are looking from the perspectives of phases that uh, travel in your complete system. Now one good achievement of this representation is you have replaced this multiplier sign by a summer sign. So we are approaching to this diagram. So we have got the summer sign here. Now we are also having a summer sign here. The only problem is this system is still non-linear because you see a sign component is present here and if it passes through the sinusoidal system uh, you will get a non-linear output here and hence the system becomes non-linear. Now if, in, if, if through some way this uh, sign can be removed then our system will become linear and we know that sine theta at very low values is equal to theta only right so if i apply this approximation i will get you know a lti system or linear time invariant system so here i have done the same thing we have just removed that sine component by assuming small error analysis small error means this theta e will be equal to sine theta e approximately. If sine theta e is approximately equal to theta e, then you see that you have small error and sine can be approximated. So for the previous diagram, this is the approximation. And I have written this 1 by s because for integrator in frequency domain, we usually write 1 by s. So now this has become a LTI system. And now this complete system can be compared to the control system that we have already learned and we can use the regular formulas because it is it has now become a LTI system. Now what we are interested in is we are interested in theta output t over theta input t or if we talk in terms of frequency domain we are interested in this particular quantity so how do we calculate this so this theta output t this theta output s if you talk in frequency domain theta output s will be equal to 1 by s into akhs into theta et so 1 by s akhs and theta e in frequency domain so theta es and theta es is the difference of theta is and theta os so that is what is being written here if you rearrange the terms you will get theta output over theta input as this particular thing so this particular thing is written here so we are interested in this particular quantity now another thing is for small error analysis we have got this thing so i have written it here again and if you cal if you want to calculate theta error it is the difference between these two things theta i and theta ot and we want this error to be uh, zero whenever you give an input and the input tries to change this theta so let's calculate this theta es also so theta es it can be further expanded as because we have got the value of this theta os over theta is so let's take theta is common from here and this term is already known to us in terms of this so substitute this here and we get this particular equation so theta es is this particular term now this is your theta es and now uh, we have received the ex expression for the output that we desire and the error that we have in the complete system and now we want to see uh, if the system is able to make this error zero 
when this theta it changes then in that case we can say that we have achieved a frequency and phase lock right so either we need um, a phase lock completely or we need a constant phase difference that is also called as a phase lock right so that's what we want to achieve so for that we want frequency and phase synchronization and how is that done let us say our incoming signal is a sin omega naught t into phi naught this phi naught here is constant and this omega naught t is not equal to omega c here in our systems, we were taking the input as omega ct here and this term was time variable. Now we are assuming that we are getting a signal where omega naught t is there in, in place of omega ct and this th uh, theta phi naught is constant. Now this can be again represented like this a sine omega ct plus theta it where theta it has this particular value. If you substitute this particular value here, you will get this signal again. That means again you have made your signal in terms of omega ct plus theta it is now a variable term. So uh, now we have got the expression for uh, this theta is because theta is can be easily calculated theta is is nothing but it can be calculated uh, from various expressions that you see here. You have this formula for theta os over theta is so this theta is if it is written in frequency domain so if it is written in frequency domain like from this particular expression this will be this particular thing because this is t so it will be 1 over s square assuming initial condition 0 and phi naught will be phi naught over s so this is the equation that we have got now we also assume that this filter hs is equal to 1 forever for simplicity we are assuming this later on we will lift this assumption but you will see that even this assumption is good enough Enough. instead of taking this as low pass filter you can take it as all pass filter it is response it is responding as if it is passing every frequency so even if you take these two things and you try to calculate theta error s that we have derived for the general case and uh, you substitute all the values here for theta is and hss1 that we have assumed here and you try to bring it in time domain you will get this particular expression so in time domain after taking the inverse laplace transformation etc you can do that exercise for yourself you will get this particular expression and um, if you let the time tend to infinity here you will see that it will become this term now here you can see that a, a is constant constant k is constant omega naught is constant uh, or om because omega naught was the frequency of the signal that you were applying at the input of the system and omega c is also known to us as constant so this term has become constant and what is this theta et so let me remind you in our original system uh, that we have here this theta et theta et is the error signal between these two so you see here this error signal has become constant and what is the error this error is in phase so this simply means that the frequency has definitely matched because in our original diagram we had omega ct plus theta it and omega ct plus theta ot now this calculation seems to say that the difference between these two terms has become constant which indirectly means that omega c and omega c they uh, have already been set constant so your frequency is locked and phase has constant difference it is independent of time so phase is also locked in that way now instead of using this hs as equal to 1 if you will use hs is equal to s plus a over s that is you make a second order pll then you will see that phase error will also be zero here you have got some constant phase error uh, in that case when you use hs is equal to s plus a over s you will see that the phase error will also be zero and frequency will also be locked so this is how uh, a phase lock loop works so we have in uh, this particular explanation we have just derived the general expression for the error of phase and uh, uh, this input output relationship for small error analysis uh, where the system behaves as LTI system and we have shown that frequency and phase synchronization can be achieved even by using all pass filter or if you use a second order PLL with HS equal to S plus A over S you will achieve phase and frequency lock perfectly phase error will be zero here phase error is constant right so now there are some important terms let us see those important terms first term is phase lock or phase coherent so so this is the term that you have already understood by now what do we mean by phase lock or phase coherence so i'm not elaborating this second point is hold in or lock in range now this hold in or lock in range means if the 
फ्री रनिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ योर वोल्टेज कंट्रोल्ड ऑसिलेटर वॉट डू वी मीन बाई फ्री रनिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी योर वोल्टेज कंट्रोल्ड ऑसिलेटर हैज अ कॉन्स्टेंट कंपोनेंट ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी प्लस सम वेरिएबल कंपोनेंट विच वॉज गिवन एज फीडबैक सो this omega c is called as free running frequency now this free running frequency and the frequency of the incoming signal uh this is one thing another thing is uh, the frequency deviation that you have for this particular thing so you provide this signal a feedback and this feedback should not be very great so that your omega c becomes thrice omega c or nine times of omega c or something like that so uh hold in or lock in range means it is defined with respect to the frequency deviation so the frequency deviation should not be very large so the frequency deviation for which <coughs> your pll will acquire uh, a lock is called as hold in or lock in range second thing is pull in or capture range now pull in or capture range it is defined with respect to the input signal frequency now what do we mean by that Uh, you have got this omega c as the free running frequency here and this omega c uh, although this complete thing is not a linear term so this is not constant so we cannot say that the frequency here is omega c if you differentiate it you will get something else so the frequency of this incoming signal should not be very much different from what frequency free running frequency you have at oscillator right so it can be better understood with this thing when we were applying uh, a signal omega not t so this omega not t this is constant term but here this should not this omega not should not be very different from omega c of the vco so the range over which your lock or capture is achieved is called as pull in or capture range so a lot of people are confused in these two terminologies but the difference is hold in or lock in range is defined with respect to frequency deviation and pull in or capture range is defined with respect to uh, difference of vco's frequency with respect to the incoming uh, signal's frequency so this is how uh, a pll works or phase lock loop works we will talk more about it and uh, this is probably it for this particular lecture